Hi and welcome to all the viewers joining us for this edition of the horses that we're going to be following and tipping for the meeting at Turfentine. On the line with me is none other than Alistair Cohen. Welcome Alistair, nice to have you on the line. And just before we get into the Turfentine card, just looking at the Dubai weather, unbelievable stuff in the pouring rain. Sheldon, I packed up off. The two races on Friday at Maidan, I thought that was it. We had one race on the dirt. Um, it was one of those races where uh, nothing was visible. Everyone except the leader was covered in brown. Uh, so I thought, right, the dirt's done. The next race they had on turf, and uh, there was a, a huge upset in that race where the odds-on favourite from Godolphin got beaten into second. I said, right, now that's definitely it. Close the windows in the commentary box, pack the binoculars away and uh, six races later we were still going at it so huge rain the golf obviously been delayed the, the final rounds on Monday as opposed to Sunday um, there are puddles everywhere but uh, yeah and, and and people in this part of the world when they see rain they go a bit crazy so uh, <laughs> we've survived it um, and I don't think there'll be too much rain for the for the last two months that I'm here for the season. Well, we soldiers, we box along. Let's get straight into the Turfentine meeting and hopefully we can be some assistance to the viewers out there. The first race, number two, stepping out is priced up at 15 to 10. Number seven, American Biscuit, seven to two. And then number four, Ngoku Shesha is at six to one. The Vitellius form line is quite prominent here. Are you leaning a bit towards number two stepping out, or do you believe number seven American Biscuit's going to have the greatest scope for improvement, or are you looking for the winner out of those top two? Sheldon, my advised a bit for the day is a bar pot, and my two numbers here are two and seven. Although number two stepping out finished in front of American Biscuit first time out, I think the improvement factor that number seven American Biscuit will show could stand them in good stead. The family all have no issue going a mile, so I think number seven American Biscuit has the scope to turn it around on number two stepping out. I was very hot on stepping out last time out. I thought he could beat the hot favorite Vartilius, and he was pretty comfortably put into his place. I'd been waiting for stepping out to be gelded, and his first run as a gel did yield some improvement, but but not enough for me to suggest that he's going to hit any lofty heart. So I don't think number seven American Biscuit is going to be lining up any legs of the South African Triple Crown or the Daily News 2000 or the Durban Guineas or anything like that. But with that said, I think number seven American Biscuit has scope to improve on his side. I've gone with both horses in the bar pot and uh, I'm pretty confident that I'll double up there. Number four, Ngoku Shesh, I think this brings slightly weaker form lines into the picture. Um, Ashley Fortunes remained loyal to Jared Penny to take the ride. I thought Jared wrote, uh, well, I brought Google Tesh's best performance last time out, but I'm not too sure that his best performance last time was enough for him to beat these two horses out of Vitalia. So two and seven for me, with preference to number seven, American Biscuit. Moving along to race number two now, when I have a look at your numbers, I see you've gone just about half the field. Numbers one, two, five, and nine. So race number two, just looking at the numbers, you don't trust this race. I think it's the hardest race on the card, Sheldon. Um, you know, number one, Destiny of Souls has been on my radar for a long time. I was slightly disappointed that he didn't go closer to Trident and King last time, but the alarming drift in the market perhaps suggests that not all was quite right. And I think going over a mile for the first time, that might be the key to him finally getting very, very close, if not winning. Calvin Habib, of course, is on his way to Singapore in the coming weeks, so this will be one of his last spins around turf and saying he'll be a, a huge loss to the jockey ranks in South Africa. Mike DeCock hit form during the week with Lashorzy Shoup. Can you believe that was Michael's first winner of the year? Um, so uh, hopefully the the dam walls have broken and there'll be a lot more to come from the uh, the world-renowned, world-class trainer that is Mike DeCock. So I think number one destiny of souls would be a, a bit of a tentative first selection, but I think he's just about ready to go well. Number two, Prairie Falcon. I'm shocked that she's still a one-time winner. She's promised a lot more than what she's delivered. Stuart Pettigrew's guard has been in great form this season. She's run to her stable companion uh, and an anti-penultimate start, coming back from a, a pretty lengthy layoff and finished four and a half lengths behind Princess Philippa, who's continued running good races, if not winning. She's gone close. I think number two, Prairie Falcon's best level of form is the best form on offer, so that's 
why she's in the play. Five Lady Calavera coming back from 10 months off the racetrack was a fluent winner last time, beating Admiral Arch, who followed up with a place at the Vol during the weeks. So the number five Lady Calavera on the back of that win has to be respected. And this being a classified stakes, she comes in as the best weighted horse in the race. And then number nine, time for that. When she comes well, she comes well in a big way. I don't know if you remember 18 months ago, she won twice in the space of three days. Well, she won just five days before this, and she beat Sequoia by a little less than a length. Um, so just the fact that when she's in good heart, she maintains her form. So I'm cognizant of that. She's got a little bit, bit of extra pudding to carry for her win. Her rating's now up to a 61. She's got 52 kilos on her back. There's number nine time for that. But she has every chance of following up if, if her, her old form and trends are to be believed. So tricky race, lots of plots at play. Next up will be race number three, and yeah, you'll be going with two runners, numbers one and four. Let's touch on number one, Supreme Dance. This is a four-time winning son of Futura. This is from the Brett Warren stable, Supreme Dance. Having a look at the highest merit rating achieved, which is a 96, would you be in agreement that would have just needed that last run? He ran like he needed his last run. He also had an awkward draw to overcome. And uh, coming out of a neat stall gate on Sunday, number one, Supreme Dance is, is one of those that should run well. He's the best weighted horse in the race, so he's got enough up in his favour. I was very close to bankering number four, Tababua, if I'm honest. I think in the place accumulator, I'd be brave enough to banker him. It's a small field. He just has to beat three horses at home. His last run to Billy Bolegs has been well franked with Billy Bolegs winning the Sea Cottage Stakes a week ago at Turfentine. Gavin Fanzale's horses are running well all over the country. So I think number four, Tababua, is the horse that they need to beat. Um, he's been in Durburg for long enough now. And, uh, you know, he lost his way in the middle. I think that's when the Durban horses just had a little bit of a slump having been in Durburg for a um, month or two and then they start to come well again so i'm using that sort of line to gauge number four tabby Bua. i think he's the horse to beat but number one supreme dance warrants a lot of respect and i think if not winning he'll go close enough next up will be race number four where they are betting two to one the field number five silver hills is priced up two to one number four little mary sunshine 28 to 10 Two runners at three to one, number six, Lady Regent, and number seven, Quiet Rebellion. You've gone with numbers five, six, and seven. So you're looking for a form result, although a small field, another one of those races where any one of the top four could win. Yeah, spot on. I don't like the top weights. Yeah, I think they give too much weight, and I think that they're just off color at the moment. So I think we can focus on the bottom weights here, Sheldon. My first selection is number five, Silver Hill. She's great to stay all day. She's going 1,800 meters for the first time. Weirdly enough, if it's not too short for her, I think she'll take all the beating. Being out of being by Silvano, out of Ash Cloud. Ash Cloud, I think, won or at least placed in the South African Oaks over 2,450 metres. So there's no limit to her stamina as far as the genetics are concerned. Her last run behind Terra Time was in a, a fairly strong field. She was thrown in the deep end, and she? She swam for most of the way. I think that run's going to do her a lot of good. I think number five, Silver Hills, is the one they all need to beat. And it will be tough for Kelvin Habib to sweat down to 53 kilos to ride, especially the day after the Met, where obviously a lot of temptation can take over after a big race day. So, so credit to Kelvin. He's showing his, uh, his metal getting down to 53 on number five, Silver Hills. If the race comes a little bit too soon, I'm always a little bit weary um, with a horse having a third start at a fairly high level against all also that are battle hard and six lady region gets the service of Muzi Yen. I think Muzi will suit the daughter of Master on my faith. She's a real trier. She's unbeaten over this distance. And even though the margin of victory was only half a length over little Mary Sunshine, she had a, she had the cards close to her chest at the line and out of a good draw, she might just end up with a run of the race. And another horse from Stuart Pettigrew's yard is probably delivered a little bit less than you would have expected in the seven fight rebellion of 52 kilos just coming in at the benchmark. She's not under sufferance here. Her last one to none other shows that she's back on the right track. And, um, you know, she's probably ripe and ready to give it a big performance. Five Silver Hills, my first choice, but I think that the uh, the bottom weight will dominate the opening leg of Jackpot 1. Thanks very much, Alistair. There's your numbers as far as the bar pot goes and giving us a great assessment there as we move on to race. <laughs> 
Number five, in race number five, they are betting seven to two the field, Jay. Yeah, as you can see, the field has been put on screen. Alistair has elected to go with two runners. I think horses four and seven you'll be looking to go with, which is October Fair, who's around seven to one, and Apache Fighter at nine to two. Firstly, let's touch on number two, Cherangoma, Alistair. This is a horse I just believe has got the raw ability to run an absolute cracker in this type of line. Up. When you look at her overall form, she's got some fair runs in the bag, and I thought five to one could represent some value. Where do you put her in the pecking order? Third or fourth? Charlotte, I'm tired of number two, Charing Gomer, if I'm honest. I've spoken to Stuart Pettigrew countless times about the daughter of Flower Alley, and he's tearing his hair out. I know that he thinks that she is much, much better than her overall record suggests. Cabello Matsunyani takes her out for Stuart Pettigrew. Going 1,800 metres for the first time in a while could be the catalyst to bring her along. She probably just needed that last run coming back from two months off. She was ridden from a, a bad draw, ridden to sleep. It, it looked like the type of run to bring her on for next time. This is next time. It wouldn't surprise me if she won, but I'm very cute on number seven, Apache Fata. I was close to bankering her in the bypot. If you go on collateral form, the run on the 27th of October where she won, she has got Thomas Ellis and Go Flickety absolutely stone cold. She finished in front of them, and she gets such a generous pull at the weights. Last time she ran behind Rarotonga Road, and she had every excuse in the book. The saddle slipped. She steadied. I think she'll love the Turfantine standstill track. I know she's been this track before, but she had excuses last time out. If uh, Weirdly, if 1,800 metres isn't a little bit on the sharp side, I think she'll take all the beating under Muzi Yeni. I think she's generously rated. I think she's generously priced. And I think that number seven, Apache Fouts, is the one that they all need to beat. I just didn't quite trust the fact that... Uh, it might be a little bit too good to be true. So my backup here is number four, October Fair. I too think she's going to train on and, and, and develop as life goes on. Um, the mother was an out-and-out -out sprinter, but she's probably got more Silvano than the mother, the way that she runs. And the fact that Sean Terry's trying her over 1,800 metres so quickly after going 1,500 metres last time out. To be fair, on your recommendation, Recommendation. There, there shouldn't be much to choose between Cherangoma and October Fair. In fact, the weight suggests Cherangoma will finish in front of October Fair. But with that said, I have an inkling that October Fair is going to relish this trip. So I'll just, just keep safe of her. To be honest, in the bar pot, one or the other, between two and four, I just went with the fresher legs on number four, October Fair. But both of them go into the pick six, along with number seven, Apache Fata, who I'm very, very keen on. Well, there we have it, Cherin Goma, one of those horses, as you mentioned. I've also been following for a while, and you mentioned Stuart Pettigrew is pulling his hair out, and I'm also one of those punters who've been watching for a while and just waiting for one of those days when the sun will shine for Cherin Goma. Let's get straight on to race number six, where number seven, Liverpool legend, is an early scratching. So that'll leave us with just six runners going down to the post. Now, Alistair, race number six, they are betting 28 to 10, a trio of runners, one, two, and five. Terra Tam being one of those horses, along with Belvade and Flying First Class. This is the type of race where you could get any result. What are you going to go your suggested bet in race number six? Where would you be leading towards? Sheldon, I'm, I'm fairly keen on number five, Flying First Class only because she's proven to go this distance. The, the further, the better for this daughter of Silvana. She's a real fighter. Calvin Abib has got a great record on her as well. And I thought the last run behind Rarotonga Rose when giving weight to a scopey progress. Sort of stands her in the right direction for a big run here. It looks like she's been prepped with this race in mind. And I think she'll be the one to beat. I have serious question marks with number one, Terra Time, and number two, Belvard. I'm not convinced they'll go a mile and a half, so I'm going to pass them by here. And I know number three at Miami has not been this distance. In fact, she's not been anywhere near this trip before. But she runs like she'll get the distance. And if you go back and have a look at her last run over 1,800 metres, she was easily the best finisher in the race. They've taken the headgear off, so hopefully she's able to settle down and running. And if she does and sort 
sort of... I don't know if she needs a pace, to be fair, but if the race is run to suit, she could be doing her best to be late. Could be a bit of a masterstroke by Gavin Van Zyl to get her in this 2,400-metre event. So if she goes the trip, I expect a big run from her. The only other horse I can have here is number four, Opera Glass, because she, too, has proven to stay. She beat Earl last time out, but Earl went off at 100-1, to one, and Opera Glass went off at 25-1. to one. I know that she's capable, but her form before that I'm a little bit wary whether that run was a flash in the pan. So in the pick six, I'll put number four, Opera Glass in, but in the bar for place accumulator, uh, swingers, and, uh, exact as I might just stay away from, but certainly swingers, three and five for me. On to the listed Wolf Power 1600, which is race number seven. Another one of those races where there's some decent opposition there. Going to be quite a race to find the winner as they put the slide on the screen there. Looking at a horse like number four, Pyromaniac. Now, he's a horse who's got the ability. We saw him come to KwaZulu Natal last time out. I thought a little bit disappointing third behind Bellis Combe. But when you look at his overall form, he's run to Safe Passage, the Desert Miracles, MK's Prides. He's a horse who's got a lot of ability. Where would Pyromaniac be in your picking order, Alistair? Right up there, Sheldon. I think Sean Terry will win it. So I think the hardest part is figuring out with who. Um, Tara Maniac's best career best came over this course and distance in the, in the Karting Guineas 11 months ago, when, as you mentioned, finishing one and a half lengths behind Safe Passage. And I know that Sean argues with a, with a good draw, Tara Maniac would have won. That's certainly what Sean thinks and how he read the race. Um, so perhaps going back to the scene of the crime, he could well follow up. Um, I know that I, I was very, very sour on number nine, Platinum Sky, last time, but he came back to bet. Oh, just going, sorry, going back to Pyromaniac, Raymond Danielson takes a ride. I think that's noteworthy. Sean and Raymond have a love-hate relationship. I think Raymond's the perfect guy for number four, Pyromaniac. If he switches the son of Silvano off, he'll be even more dangerous. So that's another point in his chances. Right, now we go on to the lucky last, and I say the lucky last, we thought the earlier races were a little bit difficult. When you look at race number eight, they're going to bring up the slide shortly. It's a big field that goes to post. It'll be over 1160 metres down the straight. We could dissect this race for an hour, but I'm just going to ask you for your top four selections, and we'll try and structure a quartet around some of those horses. I'm glad you've made it that simple because my comment for this last race is all the best to punters that are running in their exotics. You'll need all the luck you need. <laughs> um, first choice here is number three, South Boy. Gavin Arena takes a ride, drawn towards the outside. Last run to Arbitrator. He was just touched off. Couple more strides. He wins the race. I think number three, South Boy, is probably the right one in the race. Willing to give him a full run. Shandani wrote another chance. I like the last he didn't fire. Um, I think he'll run better than that. So. Uh, they'll be the two for me, three and four. They'll be my top choices here. A horse I've got a lot of people in this place. I'm going to start with this girl. I think that he'll run, he'll run nicely. If not winning, I think he'll go quite close. And really early, number 18, and my man for like an eight year old. He's got the biggest weight to shoulder, but he's run a lot better. And the fact that Clinton Binder had him in the moment the second scratching was through. Binder had number 18, Whirly Whirly, uh, straight, and Dennis Schwarz takes the ride. I think he's come down to a workable mark. I think he could be the springer in the quartet. But to be honest, all four race, watch them go down to the start. A lot in the chances. Well, thanks very much, Alistair. The line is starting to lose a little bit of signal there, so we'll let you go. Thanks very much for that. Have a top day's racing, and I'll go through all the exotic bets that we have got placed for the punters out there. So if you can hear me, Alistair, thanks very much, and all the best on the day. Let's get to the suggested bets. Thanks very much to Alistair Cohen. Just losing a little bit of the signal there late on. So let's see his suggested bet, which is the place accumulator and numbers two and seven in the opening leg. Then one, two, five, and nine. By one and four. By five, six, and four. By four and seven. By three and five. That is, in fact, e a bar pot. So just having a double take there, that is the bar pot. So take note, that is the bar pot there.
There's Alistair Cohen's suggested bets for the day. As far as my bet goes, it will be a bar pot, and I'll be leaning with a small perm on the day. I'll be going with numbers two as a banker in the opening leg, followed by numbers one and three. I'm then going to bank a horse number four. Next leg, numbers three and four, by numbers two, seven, and nine, and the final leg, numbers one and five. That's as far as the bar pot bet goes. That's a look at the meeting at Turfentine. It's gonna be one of those meetings, and let's hope everything goes according to plan. And of course, after Saturday's big race meeting, a lot of the guys will be waking up later on the Sunday, and hopefully a lot richer, and they can then invest into the Sunday meeting, All the best. Have a wonderful day's racing. Mm -hmm.